Metro Lab Brussels is a transdisciplinary and inter-university laboratory for applied and critical urban research funded by the Brussels Capital Region through its ERDF program. The action of Metrolab consists in the design, implementation and coordination of a number of applied and critical urban researches with the aim to enhance a single public policy, the ERDF Brussels program. These researches focus on a range of 10 to 20 concrete urban projects among the 46 actions funded by the ERDF for the period 2014-2020. Through the scientific support to the ERDF urban policy, the overall objective is twofold. It is practical, we want to test the capacity of university researchers to bring improvement to an urban policy such as ERDF. It is scientific and epistemological. We want to test new forms of involvement and positioning for urban research in order to improve its scientific quality. We're very happy to welcome you here in Brussels for two weeks of uh, intensive work uh, on uh, the social inclusion aspects of uh, urban planning uh, in Brussels. One of the most important points of the, the Metro Lab is that you learn from other disciplines. It permits to raise questions that uh, no one would raise because we cross questions and at the intersections of the questions that an architect has, a sociologist, a geographer, you, you have some points where the disciplines meet and there, uh, there are interesting answers that can be uh, elaborated. Uh, you cannot imagine this experiment in another city than Brussels. It's a city where a lot of things are possible. So it's possible to develop this uh, research program in a transdisciplinary way uh, by this alliance of two universities that uh, not so often work together, UCL and ULB, and so it's possible in Brussels to do so. The masterclass is a two-week process of a pedagogical and scientific experimentation, including fieldwork, workshops, as well as three public events, two evening lectures and a conference day. It is focused on urban situations taken from the ERDF program for 2014-2020. We invited 40 people from the New School, New York, Sheffield University, UK, the Instituto IUF di Venezia, Four Cities Master Program, UCL and ULB. The aim is to address the issues of urban inclusion and the question they raise for urban designers. During these two weeks, we try to elaborate the notion of urban inclusion, both as a theoretical concept and as a design practice. This collective work will lead to a set of detailed practical propositions that will be put together in a publication. We wanted to develop sort of a critique of this notion of inclusion. Not that we wanted to discard it or to, to deny it, but we wanted to open the, the, the black box of, the, of this notion of inclusion and see what uh, is behind the notion. So for me, inclusion means the fair distribution of the benefits and the burdens of society. You know, being in a society together means we all have to contribute. That's taxes, that's our time, that's our citizenship. Uh, but we also should benefit from that fairly. Inclusion had a sort of a, a semantics that had to do with the quantitative capacity of the city or of a space to get accessible to a larger population. So we, th we thought that inclusion really had to do with populations and with uh, numbers, with uh, uh, quantities, you know? But that uh, talking of an inclusive space or inclusive city uh, didn't tell us very much about qualitative uh, elements or quali qualities that a space or a city should have in order to receive these individuals, these groups, these activities these forms of life, okay? And we thought that hospitality was a more apt uh, concept to deal with this qualitative dimension. We showed through this masterclass that it's actually a very 
uh, subtle and complex process to absorb and to receive uh, larger populations or, or diversity or plurality and that it requires from uh, urban, urban actors and urban designers and, and practitioners a more qualitative uh, approach to the, the challenge that it is to receive to somebody and to offer him or her uh, hospitality. The students that, or uh, participants, that were all very respectful of each other, you know, that I think it was obviously a self-selected audience already because they are in some of the best universities in the world and also because they you know, volunteered to come on a two-week project. It was already, I think, a self-selected group that had a sort of tendencies towards inclusive behaviour. So the students, uh, they've worked on four different sites, uh, which are four sites localised in different uh, areas of the of the Brussels Capital region. The students, they were confronted to four different situations and so uh, no uh, analogies could be done between the, the four sites. So the first site uh, is the old uh, Abbey of Forêt. It's a, a site that is really linked to the history of the municipality of Forêt. And since a few years, the buildings have been uh, abandoned and the municipality uh, now wants to, uh, let's say, use the ERDF found to renovate the Abbey and to put there a new uh, cultural centre. The second site is uh, localised in uh, Anderlecht, uh, really uh, on a spot, on a place that I would uh, describe as the edge uh, of the city. Uh, and uh, on this site uh, there is important uh, uh, residential development that will be developed the next year by um, CityDev, which is a regional uh, actors, stakeholders. And um, there, uh, an ONG called uh, Médecins du Monde has the project to develop a small medical facility. Uh, the third side um, is very interesting site too, totally different, also in, in scale. It's a slaughterhouse. The name of the project is uh, Abattoir. It's uh, the place of the slaughterhouse in uh, Underlake too, but it's a more central site. It's not a city edge at all. It's really a central place. Uh, which is uh, today char characterized by its uh, quality of uh, void inside a very dense uh, urban tissue. The site is owned by a cooperative of butchers, which is something very unique, I think. Uh, they've developed since a few years uh, a master plan where they want, let's say, to reorganize the site. They've already uh, built a first uh, covered market um, and they've uh, received uh, some funds to develop a vertical uh, slaughterhouse. The first site, Drome, it's a very uh, curious site. The site is uh, abandoned since uh, like a decade and uh, there is a project to reprogram the site, keeping it uh, quite empty but reprogramming it with the new uh, activities related to leisure and to the proximity of uh, the forest. They have received uh, also ERDF round to guarantee that the site will still be uh, open and accessible to different kind of uh, publics. Each of these projects stressing a certain uh, field in a certain domain of urban experience. So we had projects about uh, culture, uh, leisure, health and food questions. So in these different uh, domains of urban life, we already see that here we differentiate the notion of, inclu of inclusion according to the specific domain in which uh, we deal with it, right? Uh, inclusion in uh, healthcare system is not uh, inclusion in the uh, in food market and uh, inclusion in the food market has nothing to do with the fact to be included in a creative uh, area for leisure and so on. So we make we make it a specific question for each domain of public life. There is no a tendency to, like in a lot of cities in Belgium, to put those infrastructure further uh, in the suburbs. I think the Metro Lab and the master class has been fantastic. It has been both a way to bring people together across disciplines to look at problems together, but in a way that actually engages with the actual places. And so I think that's very powerful. I think that's a fundamental part of the process of inclusion and reaching inclusion, including disagreement, in including understanding where there are tensions. It's been 
uh, just, I think, the most powerful experience, and I have no doubt that what will come out of the two-week process will be very impactful for helping the city of Brussels think about inclusion and think about what else, even beyond the projects, it can think about to create more. So I think the primary role is to instigate the, a particular way of working, to reframe these issues and concerns and problems, if you will, challenges that public policy making uh, faces. Conventional institutions like universities don't have spaces where this kind of concentrated collaborative work can happen. I think the role of the Metro Lab, to my mind, would be to perhaps initiate, but definitely to give um, a structure to that process, logic and structure and protocol and method to that process, and to sustain it over a longer period of time. So, in other words, I see that the academic research, the applied, applied academic urban research uh, locus of the of the Metro Lab, to my mind, particularly vis-a-vis -vis public policy, would be to broaden the processes of policy making uh, and to to give again give logic to this process and sustain it over a long period of time. And I think the Metro Lab is doing a great job in bringing community sensibilities and community participation into the design of the ultimate product. So, you know, we've been trying to steer away from vertical conceptions of urban planning to more horizontal or collaborative models. And this is a skill that needs to be learned. This is not something that is necessarily uh, just understood. It's something that has to be practiced and improved on. What you find very often is that the, the municipality, the city, the government, had, does not have enough resources nor knowledge uh, and often no desire to work with specific communities, with specific uh, citizens, uh, groups of citizens who have very particular interests. Uh, so I think that it is very um, uh, unrealistic and possibly even way too optimistic to expect that the government itself can do that. Uh, whether the, the government wants or not is almost a relevant question. I think it cannot. And so the question is who will do that? And I see Metrolab as one of these agents of change in this space in between, uh, providing some rationale, as I said before, providing some rationale, some logic, uh, some discipline, some rigor, some method in achieving these objectives. Sharing or co-producing knowledge in this case, and much of the work that we do is really trying to link the specialized knowledge of the university, the kind of professionalized knowledge of you know, design with the creative intelligence of communities, activism, and so on. So I think the future of the city would, de would be determined by that possibility of knowledge transference. Hospitality is obviously the first ethical gesture when one is confronted with you know, a, a human being in need. So hospitality is an openness, a way of welcoming somebody into a space that might be unfamiliar or scary, difficult to navigate and so forth. So we need to think about designing institutions and policies that are welcoming just from a perspective of human rights and sort of human decency. But thinking in a more kind of longitudinal or more of a, a temporal way about migration and immigration in particular is how those structures of, of hospitality are also engines of inclusivity. So that when the stranger arrives in a difficult space, how does that individual then become integrated enough to navigate as an agent in that space? So that the migrant is not understood just simply, again, as a receptacle of our charitable kind of investment, which is essential, but that there's a transformation from guest into active agent and participant of the society. Applied research is a critical tool to engage communities in solving their own problems. And there really are no limits to its importance. The challenges are the recognition of government, of universities, of the importance of applying the research and having it be inclusive, having people who are impacted by the research questions able to be participants in the research. 
Uh, so it's really just a limit of will. The challenges are understanding how powerful it is and how much farther we get in solving our problems when we have really good, strong, democratic, applied research. The big challenge was not for me, let's say, the, the final results, but more the process. And uh, how could uh, the methodology be organized to guarantee the transdisciplinary dimension that we want to experiment and develop uh, in the Metro Lab. My primary concern is how design, design broadly construed and designing, in fact then participates and promotes and sustains the broad democratic practice whose concern is socio-spatial justice. For the 27th of January, during the second week of Masterclass, Metro Lab organized a conference on urban inclusion a moment to reflect about inclusion and hospitality. A number of scholars and practitioners were invited from all over the world. À côté de cette stratégie urbaine, il y a bien évidemment les outils précieux en matière de rénovation urbaine destinés à recoudre le tissu urbain. On les a aussi pensés comme des espaces publics. Dès le début, ce que je voulais faire c'était de transformer la friche en espace comme une espèce de jardin public en trois dimensions. This is in fact this wall is the object that in the last US elections uh, is where many Americans projected their collective fear of the other. It is really really difficult to go beyond that. It's also been suggested though that the evidence base for those claims isn't necessarily clearly established. Challenge and assumption within universities that working with marginalized communities, which were much more likely to create jobs for people in communities of high unemployment. Hospitalité se pose très pratiquement dans un très grand nombre de dispositifs des politiques de la ville qui ont été mis en place ces 20 et 30 dernières années. Et une des choses qui nous dit c'est que on a envie d'aller au bout. That's also the human aspect, let's say, of the masterclass. It's not only about uh, knowledge or uh, academic or. There is also a very strong human aspect to the masterclass. You know, there are students from Jordania, Brussels, but from Brazil, I mean, China. The, I wouldn't say the whole world is here, but we have, uh, there are a lot of nationalities here and it has worked. So it's also a demonstration that, uh, I mean, if people have the volunteer to work together, it can work. Uh, it's a question of volunteer. And we demonstrated that uh, during this uh, masterclass. But we've been impressed already by the, uh, how the students are really beginning a project by meditating on the variety of actors and stakeholders, institutions, agents, policies, economies that are at play in the particular sector, and how a lot of the design will depend on reorganizing those systems and producing maybe new opportunities of coalitions, of collaboration, and policies that might be uh, engendering or kind of generative of new economic uh, conditions. So how to design process uh, in tandem with the physical environment, I think, is what is at stake here. What's exciting about a project like a master class is that it can be very topical. It can focus on an issue that's highly relevant at this given moment, and you can see how invested this group of students is in tackling these problems. It's very real for them. It's very real for their generation. And they're, they're entirely committed and, and immersed in their projects right now. I cannot be happier that uh, how we went through the workshop for the two weeks. We are all exhausted, needless to say, but I think we have arrived to a really good, uh, desirable place. A place that will enable you to take this and, and move it forward. If you're trying to model hospitality, then I think you have succeeded very well. This is a beautiful prototype we should all aspire to. Which is quite surprising for, for, the, for the BCR region. And depending on different subgroups. It's a big batch empty one. Into this, this program and also some uh, universities. Direct neighbors are uh, of a very, they do, they do by themselves. The main objective of the region is to transform this place. The abattoir is not the public institution, it's not responsible to uh, provide uh, kind of uh, social institutions for the neighbor. Heart cannot fulfill its uh, vital function of social exchange if it's um, not interconnected. I, I think you, you, you really uh, did great things and you have taken big steps. In the how to do it, we, def we defined a, a delay 
I find it very interesting to, to make students coming to live inside so, so a, a neighborhood. Until now, I found in MetroLab some researchers who are willing to help me in my project. And I have a project to, which needed, uh, needs a lot of uh, research. Uh, operational research very hardly linked to the field and uh, so with the researchers of Metrolab I can find uh, and I hope to find a methodological support to be able to find answers to my questions. For Médecins du Monde inclusion is a very very important uh, goal because uh, we are um, working with people who don't find a place in the health system and our goal is not to, to create services in a parallel system for these people, but to help them to find a place in the system with the others and the place where they feel they have the right to be. All these small things which should serve as the relational object in between all these existing functioning social initiatives and the local population. This uh, condensed uh, kind of pressure cooker really brings out why it works and uh, highlights, you know, the the really positive elements of it. But also the challenges of people who have different opinions and different definitions and different understandings about uh, words like inclusion, hospitality. You know, what what do those mean and how are they applied? I will certainly be recommending it to future students at my, my program. It's, it's very interesting because w w when I first heard about it, I didn't actually had any thoughts in, I mean, okay, urbanism, something in Brussels, blah, 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 whatever. But when I got here and when I actually started to, to see what's going on, I was totally amazed. The specificity of, of it is, uh, and I really like this part, is that we are all together. Uh, constantly and that even locals are with us uh, in, the, in this hostel, in this accommodation. Mm. Masterclass for me in a word would be interaction. We have, we have sociologists, we have architects, we have political science students and the way we interact may also condition the way we produce. So for me it was pretty much interaction. We had a few days of adjustment, getting, getting uh, used to each other's way of thinking and how we work and language barriers. And, but once we overcame that and figured out uh, how to communicate best with one another and split up the work, it, uh, everything went surprisingly smoothly. On the same line, on the same page, but there were other times when we even couldn't see each other because there was a moment where we didn't agree but we still had to produce something. But it's, it's, I think these moments when the interaction doesn't really seem to be cooperative is where we learn more about each other and when we learn who we are, what do we want and how we can also conceive and accept the existence of other points of view. The idea itself to, to have so many people, again, from multicultural sides, multicultural backgrounds, with different perspectives, it's the exact thing that you need in any kind of project. After this masterclass, well, we will continue first uh, to organize new events of this kind, so we, we just close here a first cycle of work uh, about uh, urban inclusion. We're gonna uh, switch soon to urban ecology, then to urban production. So we here have a trajectory of work and a, um, a cycle of work that makes us all in Metrolab uh, move from one aspect of urban sustainability to another. 